welcome to Upper Echelon. This is Why They Hate the Truth, Earl Spence. I would like to welcome you to the Upper Echelon. I want you to be honest and don't you lie. Don't you think of lying. Be for real. You're not a Bud Crawford fan. You just hate Spence, right? Hate it or love it, the underdog's on top. Thoughts on the big fight next weekend, Spence and Garcia. Uh, you know, Mikey's moving up like you did it to fight Hagler. What's he, can he win that fight? How do you see that fight happening? Uh, yeah. Ask him. I, guess, I'm, I guarantee he'll tell you he will win that fight. Uh, what I found was I moved up in weight sometimes. Uh, I, there was a deficit, you know. The guys are stronger, bigger, they hit harder and what have you. And uh, as when I did that, I realized that I should maintain, not try to be heavy, but maintain my speed. Because speed is what nullifies everything. But that's a good question. Thanks. What, what kind of, do you, do you have to, so you have to adjust your style uh, when you move up? How? Not necessarily adjust your style. Just be, be the fighter that you are and utilize that. But for me, speed has always been essential. Speed has always been that magic thing, that asset, the most valuable asset, and I used it to my advantage. In the end, who do you pick to win the fight, though, if you were to pick a winner? I don't ever kind of pick the, the, uh, the winner of a fight, especially in this in this uh, platform here. If you're talking about me, if you say, Ray, who's going to win a fight between you and so-and-so, I'll say me. Okay, I got to see this. I'll be disappointed if it's not. Mikey Spence, coming up in a two weeks. Mikey, Mikey. Why? You know what? Because he's Mike. You know? That, that's simple. It speaks for itself. Uh, you know, they say boxing is dead. Boxing, boxing is not dead. With all these incredible matchups, these fights coming up, about to happen. Uh, Wilder, Wilder, uh, John. Wait, what? Who say what? Who smacked who? You pick what? You say who? Oh, sugar, you are all-time great, first battle Hall of Famer. I know you have an eye for boxing. Pick a Mikey over Spence? Come on now, sugar. What's the problem? What's the hold up? What are you trying to prove, sugar? But see, I ain't gonna come at you for a tilt like that, sugar, because you know you kind of respectful with it, even though you're being disrespectful. See, you disrespect and spend respectful, but it kills me because fighters like Mikey Garcia, Canelo Alvarez, you know, the Mexican fan base are one of the greatest fan bases in all of boxing. I have to give a shout out to the shout out to the Latin Americans and y'all fan base because y'all ride or die with y'all fighters. Y'all go out there, y'all support them from rain, sleet, hail, or snow. Y'all fighters could be going against them. The abominable snowman, y'all gonna be right there like, yes, he can do it. He can do it. Y'all have faith. Y'all ride hard behind y'all fighters, and I respect that. I envy that, to be honest. Just like British fighters. Man, you can't say nothing bad about a British fighter without having a thousand of his countrymen coming behind y'all. Yes, English people do not play about their fighters. At one time, you get your head cut off about Anthony Joshua. Tyson Fury, Lennox Lewis, or Superman Joe Kawasaki, and what make the English great, it ain't about the skin color. They do not care which color they skin or their boxer is. It's the fact that they're from England and they're gonna root with him until the wheels fall off. But us as Americans, we don't do that. And it's sad to see because Spence, he laced up him gloves and them shoes for us. He fought in the Olympics for us. He had USA on his back. And he went out there, faced controversy, got robbed, got cheated for us. And still kept persevering and cheering and going through and doing what he had to do. Digging in through all the grit and the grime, all the lonely nights of putting in that hard work because boxing is not an easy thing to do. It is a very lonely thing. You have to be strong mentally as well as physically and you gotta put in that work. Cause if you don't put in that work, when it's time to show, it's gonna show whether you put in enough or you didn't put in enough. And he got cheated, got the silver medal though. 
which is great because you know it's one step down. Everybody knew that it was controversy, but then he comes back. He puts on a great show for us, a great performance. He fights who he says he's gonna fight. He sits there and cleans up a whole side of the street, and every step of the way, he's getting ostracized and they're picking against him and they're doubting his display and his skills. Like, I don't get it. Like, come on now, you sit there, Sugar Ray, you sit there talking about, it's all about speed, okay. No, Sugar Ray, I'ma keep it real with you. It's about timing. It is about timing. You should know about it because Marvin Hagler started to time you, all your great speed. It was nullified because he caught your timing down. Just like Zab Superman Judah was caught by Costa Zoo because he got his timing down. And then the fighter that you're actually picking, Mikey Garcia, because it's Mikey. He's not a speedy fighter, he's down for timing. He's a counter puncher. So you just went against what you just said, like you just contradicted yourself. You pick Mikey, then you're talking about speed is everything, but Mikey's a timing fighter, he's not a speedy fighter. He results off timing, he's not faster than Spence in nobody's America. Then you say, because it's Mikey. Okay, I pick Earl because he's the truth. Yes, Mikey is great, don't get me wrong, a four division champion. First by the Hall of Famer, yes, he came up to 140. Yes, he's beaten Adrian Broner and Robert Easter, yes. But this is Errol Spence, this is a whole different monster, a whole different beast. This is Thanos, the world crusher. So how could you pick against Earl? Next time somebody asks you, don't say it because it might be like, it's Earl. Because it is Earl, because he is the truth. That's all you say, sugar? Come on now, baby. You can do better than that, sugar. Come on now. And he idolized you growing up. He was one of his favorite fighters. That fight, hopefully we could see it, but network entities are preventing that fight from happening. Well, you know, we, we fought each other, the Hunters, the Hackers, the Wayans, and what have you. We, we just didn't say we were the best, we fought the best. All those names you, you called off, Crawford, I mean, it's just, those guys are so gifted, they're just so talented. That has to happen. I, I, I would be disappointed if those fights did take place. Thank you very much. Yeah, and the boxing fans, we was disappointed that you didn't give us Hagler versus Leonard part two because that was a very controversial fight. And you know it, sugar. You're not deaf. You're not blind. You seen the headlines. You heard the naysayers. You heard what people said. It clearly showed Hagler was doing the more damage, doing the more meaningful shots while you was doing that little shoe shine. Like you were sitting there doing a little flurries at the end, which fight and most of it was getting hit off the gloves and on the arms. But you know, y'all had a referee in the pocket. You know, it's boxing. A lot of times it has that. It's always for the bigger name they do that. But you wouldn't even rematch the man. You ran, ducked, and hide and wouldn't want to give that man a rematch. And the same month that he retires, you come back. So you retired because you didn't want to do a rematch. So as soon as he retired, you come back and get you another fight in. Now that ain't a duck, then it's a cock picking goose. That's what I say. I mean, I made big leaps, jumps. Uh, that, that is quite significant to step up. Uh, if they feel they can win, go for it. How do you see that fight playing out? Who, who do you think would win that fight? You know, because of the, the, the size, it's, it's just more than the size, and it's more than the strength. I, I don't think it was Canelo. It's more than Canelo's size and power versus Spence. Well, what else more is it? Because Spence has the faster hands and the faster feet. And I think Spence arguably throws harder shots than Canelo, if you want to be honest about it. Plus, Spence went in the doghouse with Floyd Mayweather, blacked his eye, and got kicked out. And we see what happened when Canelo went with Floyd Mayweather. 12 rounds couldn't even hurt the man. A complete wash, dry, folded up, and put back in the closet. That's what happened. As we've seen in the past with Eris Londe Laura and Floyd Mayweather, Spence has the style to nullify Canelo, just like Bilbo. 
Spence has a monster jab. His jab is like a power shot. So Canelo will be sitting at the end of Spence's jab all night. And if he's not lucky, Spence is going to beat them innards up. And Spence has a high motor. Canelo cannot fight 12 rounds at Spence's pace. Spence will break him down quickly. And he will not be able to handle the onslaught or the quick foot speed or the hand speed of a young Earl Spence. That's why he ducked him for 55 million. Press one. Shout out the champ side, cause we're talking boxing, please. Yes, boxing. Spence is a boxer, a banger, a counterer, and a demolisher, all wrapped into one. Send uh, Crawford. Thank you for Sorry guys. Why do you keep picking against him? Like why? What has he done to you? Like. You should see that your past predictions was wrong and you should eat crow and you should get this man his just dues. And like people saying that he doesn't have many tricks in the trick bag, what they fail to realize is, like I said before, he is an Olympian. So you have to box to be in the Olympics because it's a point system. And for him to get second place, he had to score and not be scored upon. It is a point system. What people don't remember is when he was fighting Lamont Peterson, he actually switched into orthodox. But I guess he remembered that the eyes are on me, so he switched back. What you don't realize is Spence hasn't even popped open his tool bag. I don't see a person at 147 that's going to make him pop open his tool bag because arguably nobody at 147 really will hurt him. Like Spence say, you will see his best characteristics at 154 160 where he get up with people that hits harder and the fights are that much more competitive more bigger men where Earl just can't stand in front of them and duke it out where he gonna have to be on his bike like Jamel Charlo does sometimes how he can box or he can get it in how he can box or bang see that's the way EJ would fight if somebody made him but they haven't made him do that yet but Sugar, maybe you just mad about something or trying to relive your past glory, but that's just like a man that got that afro that got a patch missing and want to hold on to it. Just let this shit go, man. Let it go. And you should embrace the new generation instead of hating on them. Don't get me wrong, you is an all-time great, but you've been proven wrong a few times in boxing. And it is catching up with you. Kind of like when you thought you could come back and still be the same OU and win and fault Rico Suave, my man, Macho Camacho Jr. And he gave you the business. He showed you it's time for you to sit your ass down. And see, that's what I'm telling you now. If you ain't got something Earl worthy to say, don't say nothing at all because you keep getting proved the same over and over. And why don't you just take a chance to sit back and look and see the skills that the man is displaying. Each fight, it's a different array of qualities each time. If you take the chance to sit there and look instead of hate on the man's greatness, when he's sitting there, a humble king, he's humble. That's why I don't understand where all this hate comes from because he's such a likable person. I see if he was like my man Floyd, Floyd TBE, greatest of all time. He played the bad guy because he knew people were paid to see him lose. But Earl has not once been the bad guy in his career. If anything, he's a national hero for going across the seas and fighting for us. Just because a person boxing don't mean that they're not fighting. They're fighting for our country as well. For the honor and glory of America. And what we need to do as Americans is stand behind our proud warrior like they do in every other country. They stand behind their warrior. And that's what we need to do. Stand behind our warrior. When they go out there, every time they lace them up for us, because they're fighting for us. And see, until we realize that, we're gonna be divided, a nation divided. I don't care if it's black, white, Puerto Rican, or Spanish. We're all Americans, and we should all be cheering for this man. So let us give this man his just due and treat him like a hero in which he is for our country, for America. 
we should all stand behind him and give thanks and the perseverance that he showed for us, man down. Over 41 years ago, you and her participated in one of the, the greatest fights in sports history, boxing history, world history. And now we come to the eve of the same such thing as Earl the True Spence gets ready to go against Terrence Bud Crawford. Both of them are undefeated, both of them are elite. Both of them are in their prime and they're ready. Somebody owes must go. And we don't need y'all putting down one or the other. Let's talk about each one of their skills and saying what the other can do and won't do. Because both of these are very capable fighters. And people want to downplay Earl, mostly the Hall of Famers. But Earl can do everything that Terrence can do. He has every knife in the butcher's block. Now, not being biased, but this is an uphill battle for Crawford because he has to go against a high octane style that is relentless and it comes with heavy devastation. Not saying that he can't do it, but it's damn near impossible. So if he does it, I'll call him Tom Cruise because it's Mission Impossible. Roy, I think that you're a hater, hater. Roy on top. More because I haven't seen. He's been having to fight a guy his size mm -hmm. that's going to really make him fight yet. He's been taking over, he's been outboxing everybody he fought so far. Uh, Mikey wasn't his size, so we expected that. Uh, the guy with C.K. Brook, he had some of uh, broken orbital from uh, Triple G, so I don't think he really was the same either. Um, so we haven't seen that now he's both. He just ain't fought that person yet. But now he's about to fight that person that gives us a measure stick as the way he really is. After I see what he does with Sean, then I probably give you a little bit better of a breakdown on how I see fighting. Alright, come on now, Roy. You say Spence need to fight somebody his size? He's a fucking welterweight. Everybody that he fights is his size of welterweight. Unlike Crawford moving through the divisions and fighting smaller people like Gamboa, who is a 122 pounder coming up to fight a 130 pounder, and you using Sean Porter as a measuring stick. Didn't Kell Brook beat Sean Porter? Why you couldn't use Lamont Peterson or Campo? Or Mikey Garcia, who y'all said was pound for pound great? See, I hate when people say something and then try to backtrack. Because you was on the Mikey Garcia train as well, Roy, with Sugar Ray Leonard. But now you talking about he need to fight somebody. But you're not saying nothing about Bud who's moving through fighting people like Gambo, who dared to be great, jumping up two weight divisions, or John Molina Jr. or Hank Lundy. Come on now, you talking about you need to see somebody fight somebody's size, then bring that to Crawford as well. You gotta have the same energy when you come into both fighters, Roy. That's being unbiased. I ain't saying nothing about how big it is until it's signed. Because I've been looking for it for so damn long that I'm tired of even thinking about it. You know, it's like, it's been the biggest fight that have that needs to be made for the support of boxing for the last three years. Why so long, then? I don't know. I mean, I, I do know, but, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to let Tony answer that. He understands. <laughs> he like to talk about that topic a little bit more than I do, so I'm going to talk about it. But it's like, when you play that political game. Let's talk about it, Roy. You got Terrence Crawford here saying there's a lot of puppets, and he's going to be the puppet master right now. Earl Spence has been signed his part of the contract months ago. We still haven't got Terrence Crawford to sign his. He's also trying to price himself out because see, he knows Earl Spence will do whatever it takes to become undisputed. And he knows that his time is almost short, so he's trying to get a farewell fight, a retirement check. Usually, Bud is with all the smoke, but right now, we see no smoke. Crawford has had two times to make this fight. On his way to welterweight, Spence offered him the fight, but he took the Jeff Horn fight. After the Porter fight, Spence offered him 60-40. He didn't want that fight. So, well, who's the one at fault? Come on now, let's be biased or unbiased. Which one you gonna be, Roy? Let's keep it all the way real, Roy. Because when Earl was handling his side of the business, like he said, he said, I'm gonna clean up this side of the street. Crawford was coming at him. As soon as Earl cleaned the street up, he hollered at Crawford. Now Crawford, he's silent. He trying to 
make smoke and mirrors hollering at the charlos and everything. Don't worry about the charlos, worry about this smoke in front of you. Worry about already this is the biggest payday of your career, but you sitting here stalling out the damn fight. If you knew that you could beat this man, then why don't you go ahead and take the money and take the belts then? Because you know you can't go against that bone crushing, body snatching, soul touching power of Earl the True Spence. That's what it is. And Roy, you need to start calling him for what it is and stop being on the side a hater. over Earl right now. I said, well, why you said that? So, because Earl really hadn't caught anybody that we could really mention to him. Of course, Carver and Carver and Poppy. I wouldn't say that that's a guaranteed Carver would beat Earl. No. But I was saying, basically, still, which I said the other day, we haven't seen Earl against the competition we saw Carver play against. Yeah. So, it's hard to judge and say Earl got the advantage. When we just seen, I mean, in the gym, they seem good, but we have I've yeah. seen the real. Uh, I'm saying, yeah. you see what I have. Right. So as an observer, I can't say all what y'all saw here, but I'm telling you. Plus, we all know that when the lights come on, stuff happens. So you said you judging them off of they, they, they fighting, who they seen, right? Well, let's look at these last eight opponents then, all right? You got Earl Spence going over to England and beating the champion, Kell Brook. You got Crawford beating Julius Ndongo. Look at Julius Undano. He's done lost six straight from a knockout. Who is he? Then you got Lamont Peterson, two-weight division champion Lamont Peterson, who is arguably a dog. You got Jeff Horn, who was gifted a robbery on the Manny Pacquiao fight. Then you got undefeated Ocampo, an undefeated rising prospect with over 20 wins and zero losses versus De Jose Benavidez Jr., who had just got shot. One leg. Walking around the ring, couldn't move laterally, but he gave you problems with the jab all night, Crawford. Roy, did you not see him keep Crawford at bay with the stick? It took Crawford to the 12th round to stop a one-legged man in an ass-kicking contest. Now, how can you explain that about the levels? Then you got Mikey Garcia, the fourth division champion, arguably top three pound for pound. And then you got Amir Khan, a punch drunk, washed out former shell of himself who sat there and got his face knocked out more times than a punching bag or a punching buddy. You hear me? You can't compare that. Then you got Showtime Sean Porter at his glory with a belt with six months of training camp versus Me Machine. Who? Me Machine. That's right, Me Machine. A man who arguably put Terrence Crawford on his ass in the fight. Have we seen Earl on his ass? Not even when Ugas got a free two-piece off of him did Earl touch the damn canvas. And then we got Danny Garcia, one arguably one of the most vicious counter punchers with the no-look pass that he gave Amir Khan, got washed by Earl Spence while he had a washed out version of Kale Brook, a man who fight career has been over. Then you got your Danis Uga, who was coming off a career-defining win over legendary 8th Division champion Manny Pac-Man Pacquiao, who arguably beat Sean Porter in their title match versus Sean Porter from Bud Crawford. Now, you say you comparing who they fought. Man, if you look at Earl, it look like Rocky Road, and if you keep look at Crawford, it look like the bunny slope. So how are you going to sit there and compare the two. It's like apples and oranges, Roy. You're looking like a liar, Roy. You're looking like a hater. You got a few future Hall of Famers on Earl Spence's list. I only see that one in Porter on um, Crawford's list. So, where's the measuring stick? Uh, to break the fight down, man, um, to me, Earl Spence is what you call a pressure cooker. You know, he's going to come out there on medium. And the air to fight going, going to turn up a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter, a little bit hotter. How does Terrence deal with that? Does Terrence go out and put water on that fire early and calm it down? Does Terrence wait and rise his game with that uh, temperature rise? Or does Terrence go out and just kind of smother the whole fire? That's where the fight will come at. What style of fight does Terrence choose to use? Because he got three different ways he can deal with it, but we know Earl is. We know Earl coming. Earl is going to be Earl without a question. You're right, Roy. Earl will be Earl, which has 
professional tactical aggression. You call him a pressure cooker. Yeah, he's a pressure cooker, all right? And when he turn up the pressure, that meat gonna get tender. That Crawford will get tender. And if Crawford try to turn up the heat, then the heat inside the pot will boil that much longer, that much quicker, that much hotter. You keep saying that he has different ways to put it out. Okay, if you try to smother a grease fire, you're gonna burn yourself. And if you throw water on it, you make the blaze even bigger, Roy. Listen to what you're saying. You keep saying that he has all these different styles. What is your Spence? Chopped liver? You forget Spence was an Olympian, a civil medalist who sparred against Floyd Mayweather in the doghouse. Gave him a black eye. And Floyd Mayweather arguably is the best defensive fighter of all time. All time. So yes, he is more defensively sound than Crawford. Plus, I'm going to tell you like this. Spence is that damn dude, dog, and I don't know why you hate him because you see his greatness and you think it's going to diminish your legacy. And what you should do is embrace the fact that you're able to see a young king sit here and box himself out instead of hating like the people on the outside. We already got all them against us, Roy. Not you too. E2 Brute. Ain't that what Caesar said, Roy? That's still a different animal, isn't it? It is a different animal, but like Tony just said, when you got skill to do it all, mm-hmm. and you can do whatever necessary to kind of diffuse that fire, that's why we all lean toward Crawford in the beginning. Because we know that he can do, he still do several different things in He has different faucets in this game that we've already seen on this page. You know, Earl has one real faucet. Good, but it's just that one. To make him go back like Lewis did earlier, it can be problematic for him. If you can make him shift sometime before he punches, it could be problematic for him. So like I, said, I don't know if your eyesight is fading in your old age, Roy, but everybody keeps saying, who guys hurt Spence? He didn't even hurt Spence when he got the two free hits. And you keep saying Spence does one thing good. No, he does that thing great. But that's not the only thing that he does. See, y'all keep thinking he's just some come forward pressure fighter. Okay, he can box off the back foot. One. He can jab. You know what? Jab. The key to the game is a jab. The same way Kell Brooks jabbed Terrence Crawford in two rounds and had his eye swollen. And you think Earl Spence jab is not going to swell that eye? No, it might break that damn eye. And you talking about one thing that he can do, back him up in pressure. Your back spins up, he can fight off the back foot. He is not just a single category type of person. He can do it all well, but he hasn't had the person to make him do it well. And I say like this, like I said in the other part, if I'm running the ball down the damn field and I'm getting 10 yards a carry, we're going to keep feeding the beast. You know why? Because why do other things? If it ain't broke, then don't fix it. You know, if you can't stop it, why should I stop it? And Earl is going to surprise a lot more people and he's going to shut you haters up thinking that he only got one style. Okay, you can say Terrence Crawford got many styles and all the tools in the book. So we go to a demolition site. So Terrence Crawford done brought his whole tool bag. He's ready to tat a wall down with all these different sledgehammers and tools. But my boy Earl Spence pulled up in a goddamn backhoe. You say what? He put up in a damn backhoe and he just knocked the building down with one stretch. Yes, he drove over it with a backhoe. So all them damn tools in that bag didn't mean a damn thing. You keep your bag, you keep all your tools because this backhoe is gonna run right over you just like Spence is gonna run right over Crawford. And all your skills, take it and leave it. Uh, there's more there's more uh, wrinkles to the game of, of Terrence Crawford. But I, I do think that uh, Spence being a natural welterweight combined with being excellent in what he does, uh, which is which one of the things he does very well, it's not just the pressure, but he's, it's an insane body attack. It's an insane body attack, which if executed correctly in any fight, takes away your best attributes because the body attack debilitates you. And then no matter what you do well, which is fighting backwards or forwards, fighting lefty or righty, all those things you do so well, when you can attack the body so well, it will break you. And I just can't get out of my mind that Crawford, no matter how much success he's had, is still a natural. Thank you, Paulie. Spence will break you. Did you hear what he said? Spence will break him because that body attack is too 
crucial. This is coming from another boxer, Polly, who sees it. He sees Spence on occasion. He's watched Spence break people. What you don't realize is if you tenderize meat long enough, you can take a piece of rump roast and make it softer than filet mignon, people. This is what I'm saying. All the pounding. This is blunt force trauma. A human body isn't made to take this type of punishment, this type of damage. And Earl comes with a relentless assault. It will snatch your soul. It will snatch your breath. And it will snatch your will to fight. Just like Ugas came in there, hyped and ready to take on the world as a champion, ready to do it for his people of Cuba. This man that faced death numerous occasions coming back to this country. And that couldn't stop him. But the power and the speed and skill and the tenacity of Earl, the true Spence, broke that man. And they knew they weren't gonna be to knock that man out or take that win. They knew they had to break his body. His mind was intact, but his body was broken. Ribs broken, face broken, Isaac broken, Kell Brook broken, Lamont Peterson broken. Come on, people. Garcia's career broken. Ocampo, where is Ocampo? When you fight Earl Spence, you lose boxing life. Earl, you can't fight another fight right behind him because he does internal damage. He comes out there and he embraces the art. It's gladiators like the Roman Colosseum. They fight to the death. It's just that the fighters nowadays isn't willing to die for what they believe in. But Earl told you it's kill or be killed. Boxing is not a sport. It's a fight to the death. It's a fight for your life. It's a fight of nutrition. It's one person will against the next and see who trained the best and who's going to come out on top. Who is number one? Who is the alpha male? It's the one sport that you can't play. You just got to fight with it. And Spence, he's going to put it all on the line. He's done face death. Crawford as well. But Spence is willing to face it before you beat him. And if Crawford ain't willing to go all out, then his body's gonna go out before the end. Roy, you one of the greatest pure athletes to ever lace them up. But that's all you was, was a pure athlete. You wasn't technically sound. You relied on athleticism. So instead of technical skill, so Father Time is undefeated. He got a silver in 1988 when he was robbed. You should have some compassion for Spence because he also was robbed in the Olympics. And in 2003, you was the only, fight, only fighter to go from junior middleweight all the way up to heavyweight champion to win the fight. After that fight, your athleticism started to fade. You snuck by and won a fight against Antonio Tarver, but then was knocked out in the rematch May 15, 2004. Then, you fought Glenn Johnson September 25th of 04 and was knocked out. Then your third fight with Tarver was October 1st, 2005. You lost an unanimous decision. As your athleticism waved, you tried to get an edge. You tried to enhance. You popped dirty, Roy. You popped dirty for taking steroids. So you lost your skills, your physical attribute, and then you start popping enhancements. But talking about Spence, right? Is that why you mad? Because you a dirty PED user and he talks about how he's a clean boxer. Is that the reason, Roy? Like I said, you was one of the greatest athletes to ever lay some up. You the only person that played a full professional basketball game and come back and win a fight the same night. You had a God-gifted talent, but you just didn't have the skills to pay the bill. But Earl the True Spence does have them, Roy. But see, he's gonna go a long way, whether you hate or not. But you should look inside yourself and see that this man is a brilliant fighter. And you know you're being biased because if you look at it, Crawford ain't fought nothing, no, nothing to the extent of Spence. But hey, Roy, you know what it is? Y'all must have forgot! Tarver is a hater, a hater. 
Yeah, um, Tarvin. If you knew how people are training and things like that. But if you could tell me who you're leaning towards if, in a Crawford and um, a Spence fight. Crawford reminds me of me, bro. So I'm pretty sure you know how I feel about that. Ain't nobody else gonna say that, but I'ma say it. The way he approached that shit, he don't see none of them guys. He don't care nothing about none of them guys. He, he got that real dog in him. That's why I say he remind me of me. You feel me? And I just think the man can do so much in the ring. I, I see what Charlo can do. I see what, um, uh, what's the other Spence, guy? Spence. Spence can do. I see what Spence can do. But Spence hasn't shown me that he can make a lot of adjustment. When I look at Spence style, I see the same thing. Aggressive, boxer. But I ain't never seen him boxing going back. I ain't never seen him use this counter punching ability. I ain't never seen him block, make a motherfucker miss, and make a motherfucker pay. It's a, it's levels to this. But these guys, I mean, you know, when you're looking at it through my eye, this is a different type of understanding of the game. You feel me? So I can critique those guys. I don't care who they is. I can critique their ass. Do you think it'll be a stoppage? I don't know. I, I'm just telling you, I believe Crawford has ability to do more things in the ring I've seen him do more things in the ring I've seen him fight Amadeus I've seen him knock motherfuckers out with both hands I've seen him fight I've seen him box I've seen him counter punch I've seen him do a lot of things in the ring when I see Errol Spence fights I don't see a lot of that I see a lot of the same thing the same approach, the way he knocked my boy out in, in England. Same thing, aggressive, by the problem. Same way he fighting, bro. And, and when you fight a guy like Bud Crawford, you're going to have to have a lot of different things to your game. Gotcha. That's all I feel. That's how I feel. That's how I, that's my take. First off, Tarver, with all due respect, funny how people say that before they say something disrespectful, but I have to say it. You sound like a damn fool. Talk about Bud reminds you of you. I'm a fan of boxing, not just the boxers. You and Bud are night and day. Skills Bud has, you could never hope to possess. His elusiveness, speed, his IQ, his switching, his stopping power, his ring dominance. Now, you have been dominated. You're flat-footed while he is fleet-footed. And you have a style more abbreviated to Spence when he chooses to bulldoze an opponent who can't hurt him. I said an opponent that can't hurt him, meaning you're not as skilled as when Arrow is using a calculated aggression. You and Roy are a couple of has-beens hating, while Paulie really thinks Rocky Balboa was a real fighter. Talk about you had real dog in you. I must have missed those fights, cause Eddie Harding, B-Hop, and awesome Chad Dawson fights a kitten. You were a three to one favorite versus rising middleweight B-Hop. He outstripped you, outpushed you, outdogged you, a middleweight. Yeah, you beat a weight drain Roy Jones, but you might have popped dirty for that one because you have a history of popping dirty. You've popped dirty not once, not twice, but three times for banned substances. Spence is a very efficient and economical puncher because he doesn't waste shots. All of them hurt. All of them are for a purpose. All of them for the good of the queen, like an ant in a farm. He also is an economical and efficient boxer because he doesn't waste movements. He is precise when cutting off the ring. Up close, he knows how to throw, dip, pop, roll, counter, and get up out of there before the opponent has a chance. You say Spence can't adjust. He was an Olympian, so he has to be good at Olympic style scoring. Hit and don't get hit. He put away his come forward style to outbox Mikey, who everyone said boxes too well for Spence. He didn't use an aggression so it wouldn't be no excuse. He boxed beautifully off the back foot, changing levels, in and out. You forget, Earl has one of the most explosive jabs in the game and he controlled Mikey perfectly with it. You say no dog, the man went 12 rounds fighting Sean Porter at his own game. Blow for blow, like two rams in the heat, clashing heads. No dog, thrown from a Ferrari. Only broken bone was in his mouth and he was back in the ring in less than 18 months. Fighting the top level former two division world champion, Danny Garcia, without strength and conditioning, without a warm up, damn it, Danny was the warm-up, and he got washed by Spence. 
boxing and controlled him with a superb jab. So you right, Spence doesn't have much dog in him. He's a hot damn werewolf. And he has grown and learned each fight. He has shown more wrinkles than you ever have. He put it all together after each fight. He's downloading and calculating data. And the end result was your Danis Ugas. Bud doesn't let EJ get too much experience now. Should have caught him earlier when he was still partying and not taking boxing seriously. But time's up. Thanos has finally got the final stone to the Infinity Gauntlet. And it's nothing no one can do to stop this man. Tarver say you got a keen eye. And you say you never seen Spence counter. Hell, he countered Sean Porter and dropped him on the counter. And Spence has the highest punch to hit ratio in welterweight. And everybody want to say that that come forward style is so basic. The thing is, it's not basic. He just mastered it. He mastered his craft. And when you do something so great and they can't stop it, why switch it up? That's kind of like Seattle. Throwing the ball on the one yard line with beast mode in the backfield. See, they lost the Super Bowl with it. Spence is going to do what he does until someone stops him. And then you will see the best Spence when he starts using his other tools. But one thing we can say about Spence, he won't never pop dirty. He won't never be a statistic for dudes and steroids. Mr. Antonio Tarver, Mr. Banned for anabolic testosterone. Mr. You done failed more than two tests. You sitting out here popping dirty and then talking about another man. You must have thought we forgot this. Like your co-host Roy Jones say, y'all must have forgot. And don't worry, I'm going to get on Roy too because I got a video with his name on it too. Because yeah, Roy, you pop dirty too. And you're hating on Spence as well too. So you're going into why we hate Spence file as well. I'm just letting you know ahead of time. Might be the next video. But he does what you didn't do without taking the stuff that you take. And with a better record. And he has a better legacy. Him and Bud legacy is better than yours. And I'm going to show you diversity. Look at the way B-Hop put you down. And see, this is why you're really mad. Because you see yourself in Earl. And you see yourself in Bud. But you see yourself on the other oh, end of these vicious right the and chin, malicious right shots. Right. You have flashbacks of what happened corner. to your career. Oh, right which chin, your right career you really right. this is was lackluster for real. Oh, they had right great hopes for you. Right but your biggest right. achievement and, and your only you achievement was beating Roy Jones. And who can comfortably say that you did that without performance enhancers? Because they say once a cheat, always a cheat. And those are only the times you got caught. What about the times that you didn't get caught? And they say, take the needle out your eye before you try to take one out the next man. So before you start trying to criticize and badmouth Earl, why don't we just say this is going to be a great fight and we can't wait to see who wins? Instead of trying to badmouth the other one because hating on Earl only makes him stronger. And don't throw rocks when you live in a glass house, Mr. Tarver. Because when you throw rocks living in a glass house, it can all shatter and it can all come down. And I do tell you this I bet if you and Earl was the same size, or even if you was a little bit bigger than Earl, I bet he'll wash you. B Hop washed you. You couldn't stand up to the punch placement and the damn aggression and the dominance of Earl Spence. Spence is kind of like a spider or a snake. Not saying literally he's like a spider or a snake, but like figuratively. Like people have an unknown fear and they just hate spiders and snakes. But when they don't realize that spiders and snakes kills all these pests and rodents and take away things so we can have a more enriched life. So we hate them for no reason when all they doing is helping us. Spence is showing us greatness, but all we doing is hating on him. And this man is humble with it. And he just keeps his chest down low and he just keeps chucking on through. And he just keeps going through. Just like Bull Max sat there and told Spence, we streamed your fight. Spence turned around and said, well, I bought Terrence fight because he supports his black people. And 
he's not giving up hope on us, but what we need to do is stand behind our fighters. And I'm not saying Bud is bad or Bud is great, because Bud is also a great fighter. I like them both. But I'm just explaining what I see, and I'm talking about the hate that's out there. Bud's not getting this type of hate, because people are hating on Spence, because they're scared of what they see in him. And the only way that they're going to appreciate Spence is after he loses. Because when a fighter loses, that's when people feel like it's okay to like them because now they show the flaw. And we need to get away from that. That's some Willie Lynch syndrome stuff right there. But like, share, and subscribe, please. I'm going to keep these hot contents coming for y'all every day. And one thing I like to say, I appreciate everybody that comes by the channel, everybody that likes, share, and subscribe. And we're going to make a platform out here where we have a group chat. I'm working on that now. I just got started, but we're going to have a oh, big forum where we right can all just sit chip. back and talk right sports like real grown ups. I appreciate everybody. Bless you all. Oh, handle the truth. You can't handle the truth. I just want to know, like, <clears throat> what do you think was your toughest fight? I'm going to say I had two, I had two tough fights. My first big fight, exposure fight, was with Murphy Sosa on ESPN on uh, January 23rd, 1991. Um, it was tough. He was undefeated. I was undefeated. I was undefeated. But you know what? I had to show him that I was the real deal. Because like I said once again, I was born in as a I thought I was going to over, but it was a different thing. I dropped, I dropped him three times and went to a line decision. And my same tough fight was against the man himself. I don't know if you hear yet, the body snatch on Mike McCallum. He was tough. First off, Mr. James Tony, with all due respect, I'm about to disrespect you respectfully because you started off capping. First off, you said you only had two tough fights, which was Sosa and Mike McCallum. You said you whooped them both. I seem to remember you having a fight with that bad man named Roy Jones Jr. when y'all both was undefeated. Let's talk about that undefeated fight. When you try to mimic him and you got caught in the first round, then he beat you up real bad. Then let's talk about this other tough fight you had. The one that was your biggest win in your career. It was against David Tabiri. Everyone thought you lost the fight. It was so controversial that United States Senator William Rolfe of Delaware called for investigation on possible corruption in sports. Come on now. You got, I guess you forgot about those, but I'm going to remind you of it. Because Roy Jones must have knocked something out of your brain when he hit you with that leaping left hook that you tried to mimic and you tried to be bad, but you was also great at the middleweight. But with your undisciplined style, you had to go to different weight classes because you couldn't control your weight because you liked it to eat, buddy. What y'all finally decided to give me the credit? You know what I'm saying? Take our chance, Crump Power, the beat. There may be a fight with Errol Spence, and, and, and I think you fans will understand this uh, comment. I think Crawford's the best fighter in the world. I think Spence might be the best welterweight because he's naturally a bigger man, which makes for a great fight. When they fight, who do you like? Side don't win none. I I'm a living proof of that. I'm for everybody to show it to me. I'm sure they might fight. Nah, beat that ass. So <laughs> I Sam Peter. I ask Sam Peter. So yeah, if they fight, who would you fight. like Spence Crawford? You know, everybody know who won that fight. He ain't like we don't spend. Okay. You know, Spence he he may he be he'd be he be looking at me and I'm up on that six round. Questions for James Tony? Don't get me wrong, Elspeth is a tremendous fighter. 
But he's just not on Crawford's level yet. Yeah. Come on, Smitty, you know better than shit. Well, you talking about Sam Peter and the size don't mean nothing and you beat everybody ass. Now I know you got brain damage because if I do remember, you lost to Sam Peter. Not once, but twice. You also lost to Dennis Ledview, Lucas Brown, Jason Gavin, Charles Ellis. You got a draw against Haseen Rockman. You lost against Drake Tadazzi. Montel Griffin beat you and then he beat you again. So you talking about you beat everybody and you talking about ask Sam Peter. Sam Peter's beat you not once but twice. So what are we asking him about? How easy it was to bait you? Is that what we asking about? And then when you beat John Ruiz for the WBA, but you failed the post fight testing, positive for anabolic steroid stands and all. The fight was declared a no contest. They took the win from you and banned you from boxing for 90 days and gave John Ruiz his belt back. So what are we talking about here? Then you cap it on Spence. Talking about he's not that great and he's not on Crawford level. But when you look at it, Spence has did more than you have and his record look better. Is that why you hate him? Spence done made more in his career than you have made in your entire career already. Spence is looking more spectacular and more fantastic than you. He's beating better fighters than you giving him credit for. Crawford is a beast, yes. I'm not taking nothing away from Crawford. But if you sit there talking about Crawford's resume, you got to look at Spence's resume because he has four future Hall of Famers on his resume. And the two names that Crawford does have on his resume have been watched by Spence before Crawford fought him. So where are you coming from? It's obviously that you have brain damage. You took too many shots to the head. So you're not understanding what's really going on here. Something about you haven't been hit flush. Something has happened, Mr. Tony, because you can't even get your speech patterns correct. That comes from extensive brain damage, blunt force trauma. You've been hit more than you thought you have. And them fights was not as close as you thought they was. And in your mind, you must have won the fights that you really lost. Because you're hollering Sam Peter like he knew. And all I know is Sam Peter whooped that tail twice. And you was a juicer. And you're hating on a man that's out here trying to make a way for his family and his future. Who's nothing but a shining example. If you're going to say anything about it, say Spence and Crawford both have great resumes. But Spence is just a tad bit if you want to be honest about it. And Spence is the bigger draw if we want to be honest about it. And Spence has more accredited fighters if we want to be honest about it. But you like the old other people that's old that seen Spence come out with Floyd Mayweather's blessing. And so y'all didn't get to see Floyd take a loss. So you're hoping that Spence will take a loss. I bet as soon as Spence beats Crawford, you're going to be a Boots fan next. That's what y'all do. All these people are not really Crawford fans. They're Spence detractors. Y'all just want to see Spence go down. Y'all want to see Spence lose. And the bad thing about it, he's sticking two middle fingers up and laughing at y'all each time he wins. But if you feel so sure, bet against him. Bet your puny ass check against him because I know he's making more cheddar than you. And you sitting up there, you a has-been, you washed up, and you can't even remember the fights that you lost. But it's okay, Jones, because you was good at your time. Borderline great. But you lost a lot of tough fights there, buddy. You lost a lot of fights you should have won. And I bet when it's all said and done, Spence's record and his achievements will achieve and surpass everything that you've done in the ring. Matter of fact, the man has a holiday name behind him. What do you got? All you got is a podcast that's not even yours where you sitting up there spouting out a whole bunch of nothing. This is your 15 minutes of fame. Now go on back in the recesses because we didn't know where you was at before this came out. Danny is a hater. Danny is a hater. Take a punch. He's like a, Spence is a middleweight, like a welterweight body. And I think that's why he could take a, a punch so well at that weight. But both of them get hit and I think that's what the fight is going to be interesting. You sparred more rounds. You started sparring early because of that. So we made a lot we made a lot up from the missed time. You know what I'm saying? And plus my head was always in the game. I'm always shadow boxing. I'm always jogging. I'm always watching boxing. So if, you, if your head's in the game, like if you completely separate yourself from boxing, like don't watch it, don't do nothing. Get fat, Danny, you know, you've been one of the most accomplished fighters in the sport the last 10 years, last decade. What are people 
getting wrong? What are they overlooking about you, bookies? Anybody that's that's overlooking you in this fight? No, I don't know. I can't worry about that. To be honest, all I, all I can worry about is what I do, and that's how I work for me. You know, that's all I can worry about. You know, a lot's been made about your counter punching and those things. Do you think you have more skills than Errol Spence? Yeah, definitely. You know what I'm saying? I've been at this level higher and longer than him. So in order to be at this level for a while, you gotta, uh, you gotta have to split level. And, and the hard work, I mean, that's something I always did. Are you looking to test test him earlier than maybe, you know, usually you like to take your time and, and figure things out, but are you going to try and press him early to see if his his punch resistance isn't the same after that accident? Or? You got to see. Yeah. Is that part of the game plan at all too, Angel? To... I respect the man's fight, don't get me wrong. I disrespect him. He's, uh, you know, he's a fighter, he's a champion. He's a champion. Him. What do you feel is being overlooked about that? He's, he's not there on what he meant to. It's a mental thing. It's a, it's, a, it's a mental thing, spiritual thing, and a physical. He's not there. You could you could try to lie for him and cover him up. But I can see it, man. Wait, wouldn't it mean? I can read his soul, man. He's not a bad person. I just read his spirit, you know. Mm. Doesn't it say something, though, that he jumped right into the fire again against a fighter like Danny? He got people, medical people say he's clear. Mm -hmm. So you can't, I mean, to me, honestly, all doctors ain't perfect. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because I've been through shit. The doctors almost killed me in operating. Mm -hmm. You know, and I've seen family members of mine that have been killed by medical mispractice. So doctors ain't perfect all the time. See, we about to cut through all the bullshit and all the red tape. See, what had happened was you thought you was a better fighter. You thought you had more skills. You thought you were superior to suspense. But you found out a very hard way that you're nothing compared to that man. That man is an elite fighter and you're just average. You lost your damn fight with Sean Porter. You lost to Keith Thurman. Every time you had a step up fight in 147, you lost. You sitting here living on your glory days from the 140 era. You beat Amir Khan because you hit him with a no-look hook. You was getting your butt whooped in that fight. And see, now you're talking about you have anxiety. No, anxiety is you getting in the ring every time when people told you you was the best and you would make it and you keep getting thrashed. You keep getting spanked. You keep getting whipped by another man. That's why you feel anxious. That's why you have anxiety because you know you are less of a man because you done lost to not one, not two, but three men in a hand-to-hand -hand combat sport that matters Imano Imano. And you feel short three times. And the first two, you was okay with it because it was close. But see, this one was by such a wide margin, such a chasm that it shocked your equilibrium. The same thing happened to Mikey Garcia. That's why he went ahead and retired. And now you sitting here making all these damn excuses talking about you was 40, 30, 50%. No, before the fight started, you said this is the best camp Danny's been in. This is the best you've seen Danny Garcia. This is the best version of Danny Garcia. And then when you hear Spence talking about he was only 40 and 50%, now you got a cap. You got to be Mr. Me Too and say, it's the same with us. We wasn't ready to stop the bull. Stop the presses. If you the one, like you said, you said it was the best of you. What y'all thought was y'all caught Spence when he was vulnerable, just like your dad said. Y'all thought he was half of a man. He was coming back from the car accident. Y'all felt like it was the best chance that y'all had to take Spence because y'all felt like he was a wounded animal and y'all felt y'all was going to pounce on him. But the problem was he flipped the switch, turned the trap, and tore your ass up. He about took your eye too, Danny, but he took the gas, foot off the gas in the ninth round. That fight was nowhere near close. You're talking about the only difference was the jab. The jab beat you up. And it beat you up bad. And what's crazy is I used to have respect for you because I said, okay, you talk your loss like a man. And you understood it was just nothing you could do because you couldn't get past the jab. First off, that showed that he was more supremely skilled than you because he kept you at bay with a jab. He controlled the distance range and he was letting shots off. You even stole off on him when the round was over. A clean hook shot and he just wiped your shot off. That right there showed you that your power was nothing. And that's when the pit of your stomach grew to the size of a black hole because you realized, I just gave this man my best shot and he didn't have his guard up and he still ate it. Yes, he ate it, Danny Garcia. That shows you that y'all in two different stratospheres. 
While you sit in Earth's orbit, this man is going past the sun, moon, stars, and the quasars. This man's going to a new universe. That means you and him are not alike and would never be. Even on his worst day, you couldn't beat him on your best day. And that's just the way it was, Danny. And now you sitting here talking about you will beat him now. What's changed? He's done gotten bigger, faster, and stronger. And if you come up to 154, he's going to stop you. And it's going to be a brutal stop. And he might take your eye with it, Danny. Because the bigger Earl is, the better he is. See, he's shrinking down to 147. What you better realize, the best Earl Spence will be in 154 or 160. And you struggle with David Benavidez because you didn't drop him. But you did put on a nice performance. But you struggled with the power. You didn't take him out. But you did it good. You was fast. You shoe shuffled. But that don't mean you can stand up with Earl. And that don't mean you can stand up with Charlo. You talking about going from high schools to the pro. And then you got Sensei Derek James, who's already done seen your style, picked you apart. And your dad ain't much of a trainer. He's your hype man. Y'all sitting around with your hands in the air doing a little bounce like, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, what does that mean? Now you happy because you won again. Sitting there crying because finally you can breathe again. Oh, I can breathe again. I've won. Yeah. But every time you had a big fight, you lost, Danny. And you had so much promise. But I'm not even going to hold you up. Get there with Spence because you want that payday. And you know Spence was your biggest payday. And you know that you are irrelevant, so you're trying to make yourself relevant again. So you're trying to add controversy to the Spence loss. So it'll be a reason for a rematch. But if you do want a rematch, you better get a belt at 154. And then he will gladly come take it from your hating ass. Now that's crazy, man. Why can't boxers admit when the better man has won? Because the better man has won, Danny. And then you capping, trying to downplay his skills on all these interviews. But you know. You saying this and that, but he was the one that beat you the worst out of Keith Thurman, out of Sean Porter. So what does that say about you? Exactly. But you keep wishing and you keep hoping for a star and you might get what you don't want. But be careful what you ask for because you might just get it. And Earl Spence ain't playing no games. You done pissed him off again, Danny. But the only way you're going to get that payday is if you get a belt. If not, you're still irrelevant. And that's it. But one last thing before I end this, Danny. It's real people out here that are really depressed. And they're really going through stuff. Earl Spence was thrown through a Ferrari. Broke all the teeth in his mouth. Didn't know if he was going to fight again, walk again. He had to provide for his family. You, you still in health. Just because a couple of your bodegas was facing COVID crisis, you still had money put up. And you still was healthy and all that. Just because you lose these fights, then you feel depressed because you thought you was better than what you was. Sometimes you have to see who you are and where you stand. Sometimes you can't be the greatest. And see, Earl, he was going through depression, but he didn't put it out there to the media. He didn't ask for sympathy. This man came out of a life and death situation and jumped in the ring with you. That means you easy work. He treated you like a cakewalk. And I'm talking about Sherbert Cake, buddy. With the winter crest filling. Yes, he did you like that. So, he did that to you. Then you depressed because you got beat by half of a man. But now, you get a win and you moved up weight trying to get a payday. Now you think you could beat the full man. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. The fight gonna be the same thing but worse. But hey, it's up to you. Try what you want. They say you the tries to fail. Hey, maybe you can get another shot. Maybe you can't. It's up to you if you get a belt or not. And then we're going to rehash this combo you had about you can beat Spence now. Bernard, you're a hater. Bernard, you're a hater. Let's talk about Spence versus Crawford. Which, not like, just by uh, using I like your boxing mind. I like Bud. I like Crawford. Okay. I, like, I like Crawford. What? I like, I like, I like. I like just take the experience. I think that he has more of that. That's that's to give him. Everybody know he been at these moments more than Spence. Spence is no joke. It's a fight that Crawford has to come ready. When did he never ever didn't come ready? We all know how Crawford is coming. We know that. We know how he can adjust when things is not going his way. We've seen fights that he was in 
that the second half turned it around. I haven't seen that type of threat or adversity in that way in a few fights or any fight that he had to actually change the game plan that he had coming in compared to what he settled in and took over. I believe the experience, I believe the age difference is not in Crawford's situation, is not a factor. What is a factor is the moments in the careers that both fighters has been in, that Crawford has been at this stage mentally. He had to go through some rough business chances to get to this stage that Chopping at the bit. I like him in that fight. You, you said that you haven't needed. Spence hasn't needed to make the adjustments, like you know, like the way Crawford has. Could that be maybe because what Spence does works off the bat, and he just kind of dominant from that point where he doesn't need to to make the adjustment because he's just rolling. I, I think I think it's just his talent is showing that the guys he went up against, the quality guys that he went up against, against the guys that Crawford went up against, it's night and day. It's definitely night and day. You only who your opponents are. You only who your opponents are. You can be 30 and 0. I want to see the opponents you for to justify those 30s and up. So I want to weigh the talent. I'm not saying everybody was lame ducks. They had no damn chance going in. They didn't even have a chance at the damn press conference. Let alone at the way. So we are gonna get to the damn fight. You're telling me there's a possibility? There's upsets in cases and they are surprises. There are upsets, and they are surprises. With all due respect, aren't you the same boxer that said he would never lose to a white boy? You got knocked out the ring by Joe Smith, and Kovalev gave you the worst whooping of your career. But, uh, hold up, let me introduce this. Upper echelon in the building, and Bernard Hopkins, I'm gonna go kind of slight on you because the way you talking, I'm thinking you getting some damn brain damage from all them hits to the head. And I'm gonna go ahead and say this, you was a very good boxer. You gave us a lot of years and you've had a long, illustrious career. But one thing I can say that separates you and Earl, y'all record was never the same because you started your career 0-1. You didn't even start as a winner. You was always playing catch up so you don't know what it is to be a winner, to start from that winning field. And see, you also was a dirty fighter. You brought out all the dirt and all the tricks of the trade. Anything that was dirty that you could do in a boxing match, you would do it, Bernie. Yeah, Bernie. What I don't get is, y'all keep talking about they resumes and who they fought and one fought one and one fought. Like, like y'all keep putting all this great precedence on everybody that Crawford fought. And Earl, talking about Earl fighting nobody's, if you think about it, you got it completely backwards. Earl has the more impressive resume and the more fighting statistics that you're talking about, the accolades maybe Crawford has, but Earl has the names. He's had the fighters. I'll give you a side-by-side -side comparison, Bernie, because I don't understand where you come with this. This is the last 15 fights. Number 15 for Crawford is his best fight. And that's Juriokas Gamboa. Had no way. Then he had Ray Beltran against Francisco Castro. Thomas DeLorme versus Samuel Vargas. Jerry Dean versus Phil LaGreco. Hank Lundy, that's another good fighter, versus Chris Van Heerden, which is a good fighter. Victor Postal versus Alejandro Barrera. You got John Molina Jr. versus Chris Algieri. Felix Diaz versus Leonard Bundu. You got Julius Idango versus Kale Brook. 
the champion in England. Then you got Jeff Horn versus Lamont Peterson. Then you have Jose Benavidez, one leg, been shot, versus Carlos Acampo, 23 and 0. Then you have Amir Khan, knocked out, washed up, versus Mikey Garcia. Then you have Mean Machine, Sean Porter in his prime with the championship belt. Then you have Kell Brook that's been beat already years prior and with a belt and an eye socket injury later, Kell Brook against Danny Garcia. Then you got one foot out the door, number retired, Sean Porter versus Yordanis Ugas who undoubtedly beat him in the fight but they gave it to Sean Porter. So we're going to say Crawford's best fights, first what we're going to do, we're going to take away Sean Porter and Kell Brook off both of their resumes, right? If we do that, Yadanis Ugas, Danny Garcia, Mikey Garcia, and Lamont Peterson could beat anybody on Terrence Crawford's resume. Those four fighters right there could beat anybody on that resume that Crawford has. Either one of them, you guys could wash everybody on there. Danny Garcia could wash everybody on there. Mikey Garcia most definitely would wash everybody on that list. And Lamont Peterson would beat everybody on that list. Hell, Linda Bundu might either. With the two same names took away, you got to wash the Mir Khan and a Jose Benavidez with one leg. Jeff Horn and Julius Indango. None of them fighters would beat the four that I said. Victor Postal, no. Hank Lundy, he was a great fighter, but he was way too small. But he did give Bud fits in the fight when he was beating on him, when he was switching up and Bud used his weight to stop the man. But Gamboa was his best win because taking that from him, Gamboa was a monster back in them days. He was one of my favorite fighters as well until he went through a whole bunch of adversity and some BS going through his thing. But that's a solid win for Crawford. But Danny Garcia... Mikey Garcia, Lamont Peterson, Ugas will wash everybody on Crawford record. But they sitting there talking about Earl hasn't fought nobody. No, Crawford hasn't fought nobody. And he hasn't fought the talent that he needs to fight a guy like Earl Spence. I like to see him fighting anybody at the top. Is there a name in particular that you that you think well, that? Well, well, look at the division. Take on a, another champion. Um we can clear all this stuff up real easy. And it's the drama part is part of the hype and building things up. But unification is what I, I, I always stood for. Yeah. So unification of these champions in all divisions is something that I might not live to see it, but hopefully I will will be the best thing for everybody because now you know who's who and the second guy that comes in second of being undisputed or if they say champion of being undisputed behind undisputed they would have to always have a goal to reach right you ain't really get it until you get all the belts let's take it back old school in the new school let's take this thing back in the old school to new school so we're in a new school now, 2022. Yeah. You know, and they, they, they said the Simulite baby era. Yeah. You know, they said the sugar and water era. Yeah. It's something else here. So I'm, I'm with that. Mm -hmm. And let's mix a little bit of that, mix a little bit of this, and we got a, a great recipe. Yes, that's one thing I can say you did. You did unify the belts. You was the first undisputed, Mr. Bernard Hopkins. Shout out to that, and kudos to you. And I appreciate everything you've done for the sport of boxing. Even the fact that you said you'd never get beat by a white boy. And right behind that, Sergey Kovalev beat you the worst of your career. And we don't want to talk about Joe Smith Jr. And after that, let's just go like this. What do you think Earl Spence is doing? He went and fought Kale Brook in the UK for the strap. Sean Porter for the strap. Yudanis Ugas for the strap. Now he's trying to fight your boy Bud Crawford. So he's trying to get the straps together so after he do this, he can move up and do it in junior middleweight. So he's doing what you're saying. He's trying to get the straps together. So how are you faulting him? And how are you saying he hasn't fought nobody when he's done knocked off all the top welterweights in the division except for Crawford? 
and he has a target on Crawford and except for Keith run time Thurman but now Keith want to fight him but Keith didn't want to fight him when he had a chance yeah he also, uh, Spence also tweeted you he said he wanted you to provide paperwork uh, regarding Virgil Ortiz's um, illness what, what do you make of that he, he was kind of firing back from when you questioned his 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 eye injury being legit oh he said that he, he, did he put it out yeah he tweeted it out but I mean, did he put it out he tweeted it out Oh, no, no, no. His, the proof, he didn't put it out. He didn't put out. So why are you asking me know. to do something he didn't do? See, why are you not somebody, why are you being a messenger so you can go ahead and get punched in your head <laughs> by somebody else, not by me? See, never be the messenger. Didn't you watch The Godfather? The, yeah, messenger, the messenger always get the bad end of the deal. So watch yourself leaving out this door, because I ain't going to touch you. I'm going to protect you. <laughs> I don't even know what's going to happen, but just make sure that you don't pass a message that really don't make sense because I think you'd have been more confident saying that if he would have showed what I requested. So how you came, like, I ain't gonna tip my hand for free. Matter of fact, I ain't gonna tip my hand at all. Bernie, you always about controversy. See, you've been hating on Earl from the start. And it's crazy because your career was full of controversy. Just like, when you did a promo for the Tito fight, you threw the Puerto Rican flag on the floor in New York and Puerto Rico press conference. And you started a riot in the Puerto Rican. You had to be rushed to safety. You know what I'm saying? And then everybody left Golden Boy of color but you. You seen all the stuff that was going on around, how they were backstabbing and treating and putting other people on the shelf and how they were showing favoritism, but that was okay with you as long as you got your bread, right? Now, November 04, Oscar named Bernard the president of the East Coast chapters. So, if you was ahead of the East Coast chapters, why do black fighters get treated so badly? Because you is in a place of power, a position of power. Why didn't you use your influence to make sure black fighters got treated more fairly and got promoted more fairly? Why did you not do that? Or was you too busy worried about your own self? in your own financial gain. Started some ridiculous conspiracy theory talking about Earl Spence duck Pacquiao. You don't believe he had a written a tear and he's scared of Manny Pacquiao and he knew he was gonna get beat. That's why he trying to run because he ain't never fought nobody. And dude, do you listen to yourself? Now I'm really starting to think them shots that you took to your head has affected your brain. And this is a real thing. Brain damage is a real symptom and I feel sorry for you if that's the case. Because Earl would not duck his legacy fight. That's the fight that he wants. And you sitting there talking about proof. The man had proof. The doctors came out. The man had a patch on his eye. The man had the interview with the doctors. Dude, what are you asking for? Like it's in your face and you still won't accept the truth. Because you'd rather take a lie. Than accept Earl the truth. Exactly. But let's talk about this. Virgil Ortiz was hospitalized because he lost too much weight too fast. But you ain't want to put them things out there, right? That means because he was too big to be fighting his division and he tried to cram, lose weight with a crash diet. And his body crashed. His body crashed like you did on your pro debut when you lost that fight. And you've been chasing greatness ever since. But you can hate on Earl because he's going to keep laughing all the way to the bank. And Earl has zero losses. Your first fight was a loss. You lost to Joe Smith, Sergey Kovalev, Chad Dawson. Man, you got Joe Kawasaki, Mr. Don't Lose the White Boy. You lost to Dag on Jermaine Taylor, Robert Allen, Sergey Mercato, Roy Jones, Clint Mitchell. So, hell, you got a lot of losses on your record, too. But I can't say you fought the best of the best and you fought till you was 50. But you know, if you was more responsible with your money and had a retirement plan, you wouldn't have to did that. So you need to stop trying to hate on Spence because if you look, your boss, the Golden Boy, he's trying to court Spence. Spence, won't you come on down here to Golden Boy? We can make some money. You steady trash at Spence while your boss is glorifying him. Spence, man, we can make some real big money you sign with Golden Boy. I guess he ain't talked to you about that, huh? That shows where you rank at on the pay grade system. I bet he'll get rid of you to sign Spence. So don't think that your position there is tenuous because, man, you just another dude to fill the spot, man. You they quota. You know, affirmative action came in and they got you so they can say they got one. 
Yeah, so stop hating because Spence gonna keep going all the way to the top. Runtime is a hater, a hater. I think you're right. Runtime is. I'm willing to fight everybody. But the way Floyd is talking about like, Thurman's ducking Spence, everyone's ducking Spence. You know, go four years ago, everyone ducked Close to one time Thurman. So let's take care of that. You know what I'm saying? And. Let's be real. <laughs> Let's be honest. Amir Khan has more to offer than Errol Spence. Right, what does he have to offer? <laughs> absolutely nothing. The only thing is that Floyd is not standing behind Amir Khan and, and, and challenging you. So, so I'm exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So how about I stand behind somebody? And just have bigger, better fights. How come you don't want that fight with Spence? Every that's the fight. That I don't want it. You're not. It's. I know you said it's all about your health. Yeah, the, the moment's not now. What? Um, it's not today, and it's not tomorrow. Doesn't mean that it's not a fight that's gonna happen, right? Like, I and and I wonder why Keith Thurman is keep ducking Errol Spence. Everybody is ducking Errol Spence. Errol My Spence wants his mandatory with Cal Brook. Keith, one time Thurman, your old hating ass. You sitting there talking about Amir Khan has more to offer than Spence. Then you keep saying this and that. You'll make the Spence fight. Yes, you want the Spence fight. But unfortunately, you just denied you were in the Spence fight. You told Spence to get a belt and then you could fight. But before then, you said he has no experience. He's too green. So he went across seas to England, got a belt, came back. He beat the man that all y'all were scared of, the special one, Kill Brook. Then he come back to you, now you hurt. But the reason why you mad at people because you had them fooled. People thought you was this tough, thorough individual. I did too. When I seen you take on Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, I said, boy, run time is that man. But you turned from one time to run time because you seen this young wolf behind you. What happened to the Keith? Yo, Pauly, don't duck me, son. You better not duck me, son. What happened to that same energy? You got Earl Spence, he been on your ass since 2017. And you say you want the belt, he had a belt. But you continue to get an injury after injury. I'm starting to think he was made of glass. And then when you come back, you talking about this is a step up year for you. You're not gonna make any big fights, quote unquote. Then you have a nerve to take a championship fight with Manny Pacquiao. Yes, that's a Hall of Fame fight. Yes, I do believe that is a great fight, but you said you weren't taking no big fights and you said when you do it's for a belt. Now, you went out there, you tried to steal the church's money and Manny Pacquiao old ass put you in the dirt. He put you right on your ass and you thought you was going to skate by with it. And it's funny because that's karma. All that time you were sitting there ducking Earl Spence, wouldn't give him a chance. Now, like he says, times have changed. Now he the big fish. Now you sitting there looking all crazy and shit. Yeah, run time. It's a sad shame now, ain't it? Keep run time Thurman. And you had the villains to be someone great. Not taking nothing away from you, but you just was a smart fighter. People, don't, they give you credit for your intelligence. And see, I seen the plea. I seen the, I seen it. See, when you fought Danny Garcia and Sean Porter, you was able to get five, six quick rounds fast on him because you know Danny Garcia is a count puncher. He don't start fast. And you know you can outpoint Sean Porter. So you went ahead, jumped up on those cool cards and cruised your way to a victory. You know with Earl Spence, that ain't what's gonna work. You knew that was gonna be a hard knock, grueling fight. And you knew he was gonna test your limits and you couldn't get away from him because he's the best at cutting off the rings. And you know you weak in the body and you knew he was gonna test your guts. He was gonna knock food that you ate a week prior up out of you. He was gonna de-rehydrate you. Yeah, I said it de-rehydrate you. And you understood that. So you made a calculated decision and it failed on you. Now you sitting here looking back, thinking what it could have been and how what it should have been, and talking about everything is everything with Keith Thurman in it. You no, know, we've been fine without you. You ain't trying to make the fights with him then, so why should he wanna make them with you now? Yeah. It's funny how shit come around now, you dig? Styles makes fights. And um, I think Crawford 
or Thurman just have the potential, the right type of potentiality um, to challenge Spence. Who seems to be next uh, for Spence? Yeah, uh, both of them. How do you see uh, that fight playing now? And do you almost maybe want to root for Ugas in the sense that you know he hasn't no. said anything about not fighting you and Spence has? Okay. That part, yes. <laughs> but the other, the other part is, look, man, you, he can constantly say what he wants on an opinion. Let's get the, let's, let, let Al write up the contract. Let him see what's really on the table. Is he really going to stay away from Thurman? Is he really going to avoid me that much? Does he got that much hatred? Look, at the end of the day, Ugas, Spence, great fight. Ugas, Thurman, better fight. Spence, Thurman, better fight. Thurman Crawford, better fight. Thurman versus your mama, great fight. Okay, see now that you've been denied and you see that history is going to be made without you, now you're trying to insert Keith Thurman in there. Now you're going hard for these belts because you don't have a belt. You see Earl Spence and Terrence Crawford is about to make history. And that's what you always wanted was to make history. This is a fight that is legendary. 41 years in the making. The best versus the best. And no, Keith Thurman, you're not the best. You got beat by a retired Manny Pacquiao, yes. A retired Manny Pacquiao who Ugas beat, who Earl smashed, yes. You got beat by that. So you versus any of these fighters would not be a good fight. It'd be an ass whooping. You failed, you failed to stop a rising 140 pounder Mario Barrios in y'all fight. And then you pull some strings with Sulan and make it a tight and eliminator fight, which Earl still is not gonna honor. But when Mario Barrios fought Javante Tank Davis, who moved up from 135, Javante Tank Davis dropped him three times and stopped him viciously. But the other side of that coin is, you dropped Mario Barrios none, and he hurt you to the body, made you spit your damn mouthpiece out. So Keith, the time has passed you by, Mr. Runtime. You are probably like a good gatekeeper right now because you didn't take boxing the way you should have like you let your premium years go past and don't get it wrong you were a pretty good fighter maybe even pretty great a little bit but your style is a pure boxing style which you had power in your hands but if a person got on your ass and came ruling like an Earl Spence it would negate everything you had like Jose Cito Lopez was on your ass like a front foot dominant boxer will be your downfall if a person can keep up a high octane and a high pressure on you, you wouldn't know what to do with it, Keith Thurman. And that's why you avoided Spence for so long. But now, you trying to do any and everything, trying to poke at the bear, trying to get back into relevance. But no, you're not being in relevance no more. Earl said he'll drop the belts before he fights you. He'll move up before he fights you. That's no, Keith Thurman. Like a woman tells a man, no means no, Thurman. Talking about Thurman versus Crawford would be a great fight, or Thurman versus Spence would be a better fight. No, Spence versus Crawford will be a great fight. It will be the best fight. It'll be a history-making fight. And this history is going to happen without Keith Runtime Thurman. I'm sorry, but your ship has sailed. You had a chance to stop this young giant before he got started. You should have stopped this railroad train before he got a moving of steam because Earl Spence is the juggernaut. And once the juggernaut gets to rolling, there's no way you can stop him. Nothing can stop him. And you're lucky that he doesn't just pit stop and roll right over you, Keith Thurman. But he gonna leave you to young things like boots in them because you ain't got no wins here. And I'm ready from the beginning. When I stepped on the scene, I said I wanted this belt. I said I wanted that belt. I told you guys I want to grab all the belts, you know. So I'm still on the mission, but my house comes first. He's not that enticing with these world titles all snagged up by two fighters right now, you know. Our Sean Porter, T7 spot Danny Garcia. But when T7 spot Sean Porter and Danny Garcia, world titles were on the line. So for two champions, Harold Spence Jr and Bud Crawford to be holding on to all four of the belts right now. It just hurts the welterweight division um, as far as making some of the most exciting fights because some of the most exciting fights deserve. You want to talk about holding belts is hurting the welterweight division? How about Mr. Keith Thurman who held the WBA and the WBC hostage for two years without making a fight? You had to give up the WBC because you were so inactive. Keith, you fought 
three times in five and a half years. You held up belts, Keith. So don't give me that. And you also was the one that wanted to get this belt, that belt, and that belt. Wasn't your dream to make it undisputed? So when Keith Thurman was snatched up the belts, when Keith Thurman unified the belts, it was okay. But when the young hungry lion, Earl, the true spitz, starts snatching up the belts like Keith Thurman wanted to, who Keith Thurman denied, then it's a motherfucking problem. I'm sorry, excuse my French, but it's El Problemo. Now you want to sit here and cry to anybody that'll listen to it. Cry yourself a river, Keith. And if you really want to do something, why don't you become more proactive in the situation? If you're smart enough, why don't you hit up the 154 and challenge Jamil Charlo? And then, if you get that, then Earl has no choice but to come through you. Use your brain. Stop trying to get Al Heyman to give you a gift because he's been gifting you with fights your whole freaking career since you got the belts. He's been patting you like Rocky on number three when Clubber Lane says you are paper champ. You ain't fighting nobody, champ. And that's the problem. You haven't been fighting nobody since you got the belt. You lost your passion. You lost your hunger. And now you see history being made. And now you got that green eye of jealousy, that envy in your eye. So now you want to hate. Hate don't look good on you, Keith Thurman. But you can hate all you want to. You can beg all you want to. But the super fight is happening with or without Keith Thurman. Better without it. Better be glad and ask them, can you at least commentate on it? That way you can hate on Earl Spence on the front row. That way you can try to sway the judges because, hey, the man is better than you. Crawford is better than you. And you done passed your prime. You like a old prostitute that's been on the damn block too long. It's time for her to just pack it in. You know, I mean, you still a good fighter, but... Hey, them young guns are gonna be on your tail. You got boots that they're gonna deal with. You got Ortiz. Like, you got Uga, Stanionis. But you're getting kinda high in your prime, Thurman. But instead of sitting around eating bonbons and hating on Spence, won't you go to the gym, get yourself back in fighting shape, and get ready to come out here and damn make a statement? Because last time I checked, you was over 180 damn pounds. What the damn thing is you doing? Thurman, runtime, get your shit together, get your mind right. So what you need to do is get in the gym and get your life back in order and get your body back right. If you even hope to compete with somebody at this level, because you got that call right now, you wouldn't be ready, Mr. 188 pounds. So yes, you can keep hating on Earl from the side, and guess what? It ain't gonna stop the unification bout with him and Crawford. So see you later, hater. You a hater, Sean. You a hater. Yeah. First of all, Fox contacted me for the job, and then once they start sending me all that shit, tell me I gotta, um, you know, review fighters and look up fighters and everything like that. I told me I wasn't gonna do it. And you know, secondly, what am I jealous of? You don't look better than me. You're not more well known than me. You've been pro way longer than me, and I make more money than him and everything. So I ain't got nothing to be jealous of with Sean Porter at all. But I mean, you know, it don't really sound good. I can't even say it sounds good. It don't sound good at all saying I do. I'm jealous of his existence. Like, you know what I'm saying? I make way more money than him. I don't have people in my pocket like, you know what I'm saying, like his daddy is. So, I mean, it is what it is. And as this, as this might become kind of personal. Oh, uh, that ain't personal at all. Well, it's quite personal, but I mean, I ain't got nothing bad to say about them or, you know, his daddy, things like that. They can say what they want, saying I ain't signed a contract. I've been signed a contract. And I know the date. If he don't know the date, that's his fault. How was the delay? It, it was no delay. No delay? Nah. Time to cook. Showtime, Sean Porter. The reason why you hate Spence is because you enamored with Spence because you're jealous. You're jealous, kitty, you're jealous. You're jealous, kitty, you're jealous. Yes, Sean Porter, you're jealous of Earl Spence. Ever since that day your father came home and told you he was training Earl Spence, a streak of jealousy had begun to starve in your heart. Even when Earl Spence was going for the 2012 Olympics, coached by your father, he brought you in to spar four rounds with Earl Spence. And you didn't watch him as a professional and he was an amateur but see in your heart you know 
you train twice as hard as Spence to have half the skills of Spence. And see, that's the problem because Sean Porter, you're mad because your talents is lacking. You're a good fighter, but no matter how hard you train, you don't have a half of the gifts that Earl Spence got. You got beat by Kell Brook and Earl Spence had to go get your belt back. Like, he's your big brother. But you was setting him like he was some little brother type stuff because you used to spar with him when he was younger and everything. Sean Porter is extremely jealous. He's always trying to compare himself to Spence. He tried to do something better for Spence, but he did that because it was Kenny Porter's fault. Kenny Porter was thrilled to have a fighter such as Earl Spence's caliber under his wing. And he tried and he trained and he pushed him to the most. He was taking all types of tournaments with Sean Porter there, sitting there soaking in the background. But Kenny Porter and Earl Spence was not meant to be forever because he moved on to the illustrious Derrick James. But Sean Porter saw it was a way to get back in his father's good graces, but it didn't. His father was just stuck with you because you're all he had left. And Earl Spence is going on a bigger and better things. And Sean Porter, as a professional fighter, knew that he was going to have to eventually fight Earl Spence. Then saying Earl Spence is jealous of him, no. Everything you got is because Earl giving it to you, Sean. They offered him the show first. They offered him everything you got first. You're not even a first candidate. You're the other option. And you'll always be the other option. Even with your father, you're the other option. Because if he could pick who he would rather have as a son, you know it would be Earl the True Spence. And that's what hurts you. And that's what gets you so mad. Because you don't have the talent or the will or the strength and power or your father's love that Earl Spence has. That's why you're mad. You let Kill Brook come to America and take the strap. But don't worry, Earl when he got it back. Yeah, I'm not saying Keith is Bernard, but you know, <laughs> yeah. when we talk about some of the smarter boxers in, in, in the game, we should talk about Keith yeah. Of course, we all been waiting on Earl Spence and, and, and Terrence Crawford for a while. I would love to, to pepper in Keith Thurman. I think that those would fights would be exciting too. But would you put him like in your top three, top four? I think he would be flirting with three. Uh, in terms of in competition, he'd be flirting with three. Who's one and two? Um, one and two are um, Terrence Crawford and believe it or not, uh, Keith Thurman. Oh, wow. uh, now a lot of people you probably would expect me to say Earl Smith Jr. I see the power oh. maybe or no? Why? Why Thurman's uh, high? So people talk about the intelligence that Earl has. He's highly intelligent. Athletic too. I'd be remiss if I didn't say Porter with podcast. He came on and he broke down to me how he broke down the fight before we got in the ring. I'm like, damn, like, like all right, I just got to this 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 level of intelligence. You've been there for a minute. You know what I mean? <laughs> First off, Mr. Porter, what is the deal with you and Keith Thurman? It's like he's your fucking idol or a superhero or everything. Like, oh, I wanna put Thurman in this, uh, Thurman is that. Oh, Thurman's so smart. And this is what I come to tell people that all these people that think that they're Bud fans, they're not Bud fans. They're just Earl Spence haters. And a lot of them are Keith Thurman fans. And Showtime Sean Porter, you are a Keith Thurman fan. Are you not watching the, the history leaves? Are you not looking at the tea leaves? Keith Thurman ran from this man right here, but you sitting here idolizing him. He beats you, but you sitting there idolizing him. And you're calling yourself a warrior. A warrior would never idolize an opponent. Especially when they beat you like that. And you're going to sit there and say Earl is your fourth hardest opponent? You fought Keith Thurman. You fought your Danis Ugas, Terrence Crawford, and Keith and Earl Spence. Pardon my French, Earl Spence. Earl Spence beat you. Your Danis Ugas, he beat you, but they gave you the win. But you're going to sit there and say that they're all over Earl Spence? That's what I call hate. And ever since you lost the fight to Earl Spence, you've been hating on the low. You always try to discredit everything that man does. Like, they say he can jab. Oh, he can't jab. He just throw it out there. They say he fight off the back foot. Nah, he be running. They say he slipped and he moved. No, he don't. He be getting tagged. Like, dude, hating is a feminine trait. And it don't look good on you Showtime, Sean Porter. And you doing it a lot. You doing it a lot. But I can tell you this, you can say what you want to say. And you talking about how you were such a great fighter and everything, but you lost to Earl Spence. 
he dropped you, he beat you, and everybody thought the fight was close. It really wasn't because you got beat about nine to three. If you go back and look, because he was dipping your shots and tagging you, hitting and bagging you, and then he beat you. Period. Dropped you off in the eleventh round, and people say you are a hall of famer. You might get in the back door, but you won't be a first or second ballot hall of famer. The only people you beat was that on Adrian Broner. Look, every time you had a big fight and you beat your name as Ugas, it was a gift decision. But every time you had a big fight, you fell short. You lost to Keith Thurman. You beat Danny Garcia. Oh, wow. But you lost to Earl Spence. You lost to Kale Brook. You lost to Terrence Crawford. So the four biggest fights you had, you lost. You came up short. So I guess that balanced you to get in the Hall of Fame or not? I don't know. It's not up to me. But I can say one thing. You are a warrior because you did fight the fights and everybody else was running scared. Even though you didn't want to fight the Earl Spence that Lamont Peterson fought. No. You wanted Earl Spence after he was out drinking and partying. But now the man with the shag is back. Shout out to Keon. But Earl Spence is ready. And you can keep on hating on him. But all your hating is doing is motivating him, pushing him straight to the bank. You hear me? And your dad still wish that Earl was his son, but it's all good. Because guess what? Every time a big fight pop up, you gotta talk about Spence. And he makes up to one part of the biggest fight in history. Earl Spence is making history, Sean Porter. Do you understand that? He has a holiday named after him. Yes, he has his own holiday. And the main thing that makes you mad is what he told you. You a man with no land. You ain't have no place that you can call your own. You don't sell out nothing. Earl Spence is embraced by Dallas. Hell, New York even wants him because he was born there. So this man is a global superstar already. And he's only getting bigger and bigger. Next, he might get a special day worldwide. But it won't be you. All you do is cover it. And you, you was a good guy, man. You was a warrior. Stop hating so much. Hating don't look good on you, man. Women hate. Me and we congratulate. To Bradley, Next. you're a hater. To Bradley, you're a hater. And then you accomplish your goal, and then everybody take it all away from you. Like, it just feels like death. It honestly felt like death. And I felt like literally like taking my own life. It was that bad. It was that bad. You know, it was me against the world. It's my family, it's my wife, it's my kids against the world. Like, so many people turn their back on me. You know, they turn their back on my family. It's just the, just that everybody, a lot of people are just followers and they tend to just bully and pick and, you know, you on social media that no one can see you, you know, no one can see you. So people say terrible things. I said I wanted to commit suicide. I didn't want to live anymore. I didn't want to fight anymore. So you know what it's like to be hated on and for people to spread false narratives against you, right, Tim? But look at you now. You do the exact same thing that you claim everybody did to you to make you feel the certain way that you did that you almost wanted to kill yourself. But this man right here has went through a horrific car accident, an eye injury, and you still own this man's case. Like, you spread the false narrative like this man don't want the work that he wants. And he showed you from day one, he wants that work. He told you what he was going to do. He said, I'm going to get all three belts. Then I'm going to get Terrence Crawford's. But you steady right there trying to push the narrative that he can't come see Terrence Crawford because he's scared. If we think about it, we break this all the way down, Tim. First off, you know, Crawford would be suing Bob Arum if this was Spence's fault, for one. And for two, I seem to remember you had a chance to fight Spence, but you didn't. You start how that across the street stuff. But now it's not no cross the street stuff. And in this video right here, I'm going to show how you sit there and you contradict yourself. And you say any and everything just to get your point across. It's called changing the narratives, Tim. And you're supposed to be better than that because you have the responsibility to teach people what's right and what's wrong. Because you're in a position to teach people. Not to lead them astray. And you lead them down the wrong path. You lead them down old media because you sitting here saying any and everything, not thinking about the consequences of what you're saying and the actions and the reactions and how it might affect the next man the same way it affected you and had you want to quit and they're going to kill yourself and your family. You forgot about that, didn't you, Mr. Tim Bradley?
Well, I'm here to remind you, Tim Bradley, because everything you say can and will be used against you in the court of upper echelon. And now we're on your ass now. Oh, Earl Spence. Mm. So Earl Spence. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, everybody, nobody wants to fight Earl Spence. You know, mm-hmm. so he, he's, he's building more confidence so nobody wants to fight Earl Spence. Would you like to fight him? Man, Earl, Sp- Earl for what? <laughs> Man, guys, this is, come on, man. <laughs> Would you like to fight him? Man, I was, uh, for what? <laughs> Boogie, man. I don't see a lot of people calling out Earl Spence. Bro, when is Earl Spence fighting again? March 16th. Yeah, but how long has it been? Uh, what was a long June. time. June. I wasn't his last fight. June? June of this June year? Star, yeah. 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 June of this year? Yeah, oh, oh, last first year. Round knockout, remember? Yeah, but hey, where you at? I saw some of your... And he's going to be retiring, man. What's your take on that, you know? Uh, I mean, he had a great career, and, uh, you know, it's his time. He made a lot of great money, uh, had a lot of great fights. You know, basically, he put his life on the line when he fought, because he fought any and everybody. So, um, if he retires, man, I wish him good luck in anything else that he does in life. And, uh, you know, he had a great career. Is that somebody you wish that maybe you would have got a chance to, to share the ring with? Uh, I mean, I believe everything happened for a reason. I'm not going to say I wish that I got a chance with. I mean, you know, if it, if it happens or he decides to come back and I fight him, then, you know, cool. But, you know, I'm going to wish him, uh, you know, a great retirement. You see that Earl was humble and respectful. But he know, like I know, like you know, like everybody else know, you ducked that man. He was a hungry young lion, and you was a gazelle. You was in his sights, and you was right for the picking right there. He was been a great name to go on his resume, Tim Bradley, the Iron Man. And you knew it, he knew it, we all knew it. That's why you ducked. The WBA said, Tim, make the fight. Tim was like, oh no, you start hauling that different sizes of the street. You try to say we don't do business with them. You find, you said, forget it. I'm just gonna go ahead and retire. You was at the peak of your career. You still had fights left, but you seen the Grim Reaper, who is Earl Spence, coming for you. You talking about Boogeyman. You know he was the Boogeyman. That's why Keith Thurman was ducking him. Floyd told y'all, y'all can come get his belt if you fight this young lion. You didn't want it, Porter didn't want it, Keith Thurman didn't want it, and I thought you wanted to get a belt. That was the best thing, but not you, Tim Bradley, and we're not gonna let you sit there and say nothing. And now you sit there and jump on Terrence Crawford because you feel like he has a chance to stop Earl. You're not really a Terrence Crawford fan, you just want to see Earl go down because he ended your career early and he put the punk down on you. That man punked you, that's what the word is. You a grown man scared of another man. You got punk, Tim Bradley. Punk. And my, a lot of people think that Spence is gonna run through Mikey. No, but, it's uh, a 50-50 fight. Man, a lot of people I don't think so. A, big step up. a lot of people don't think so, man, because Sorry, because Spence is just big. All right, just put it that way. Mikey knows what he gotta do, because I see the same thing that Mikey sees. Okay, I ain't gonna give it away, but I just wanna see if Mikey can do that. I ain't gonna give it away. You said you seen some when he followed Lamar Peterson as well. No, see, the thing is, is that Spence don't move his head. Spence's head is always there. It's always there to be hit. You know, Mike is a really good counter puncher. You know what I mean? Spence will, Spence will throw, and then he's right there. He stays there. You know what I mean? He like that. He'll catch a couple. He'll catch a couple. But he's right there to be hit right down the middle. I can tell you, he's just, to me, one dimensional, man. I look at him, I'm like, okay, here he comes. Hit the jab. Jab, jab, straight left, step back, try to get distance. He'll he'll leave that jab out there, you know what I mean? To keep his distance, to land a straight left, you know, to land a straight left, straight left hand to the body, you know, the two body shots, the combination he throws, boom, 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 boom. I, I know his combinations, I know everything that Spence likes to do. Well, I guess Mikey Garcia didn't have his glasses that day because whatever he thought he seen, he couldn't find it when he was in the ring. And you sit there and say what Spence can and can't do. And you sitting there saying that he's one dimensional. So why doesn't he lose? He ain't lost yet. But you got a loss. You got two. Actually three to the same person. But we'll get to that later. But they gave you one of them decisions. You say he don't move. Well he don't get hit. He's the least hit welterweight. And he has the highest punch to hit ratio. But you saying that he's basic and he's one dimensional. I seen him box Mikey Garcia the whole fight. You a sports analyst, you supposed to see this, Tim. He controlled the distance. 
He controlled the range with his jab. Mikey could not get in there and touch Spence. He also did it to Danny Garcia, in and out boxing. The way he boxed Lamont Peterson, he was in and out, changing levels. He changed distance, he was pivoting. He even switched stances, he went orthodox for a minute. But you saying he's one dimensional, and you saying it's right there and it's easy to hit. So why didn't you get in there and fight him? If he's so easy and you see so much, why don't you get your black ass in there and go see what the truth is all about? Because you know, and it's propaganda that you're pushing. You're trying to make the man seem less than what he really is, and that's some hating ass shit. Because if you really thought that way, won't you go in there and try to fight him? You come back, won't you come back and go try to get them three straps you got? Or let's talk about how you quit. You ran away. So anything you say against that man, you're saying it begrudgingly. Because that man ended your career and he was going to beat your ass. And you talking about like you somebody special to him. No, you're not. You was a carry fighter who was gifted a biggest win in your career. It was gifted to you. You didn't earn it. And that's what I'm saying. And then you think that makes you qualified to talk about this young lion like this. Like you really put in the damn work. If you was really a champion like you said, a beast like you said, you would have took all challengers. To say that you ducked him, can you give us any clarification on that? Oh. On Spence. Saying that you that ducked him. That you ducked him. That, that you retired instead of facing him. Bro, listen. <laughs> you said that WBC ordered the fight. Oh yeah, were you saying something, Tim? Here you go. Oh, the WBC. He said the WBC ordered the fight. He yeah. right, the WBC did order the fight, but, but check this out. I fought Manny Pacquiao instead of Earl Spence. One, two, two. This is the second thing now. I'm gonna, let, I'm gonna give it to y'all right now. The second thing is, is that when the hell have we been doing business on anybody from Top Rank been doing business without him? You know what I'm saying? So, bro, say whatever you want to say. Duck you and retire because I want to face you, bro. You know the fuck. You know who I am? I almost start cussing. You know what? <laughs> you know who I am? You should be playing out that song. Catch up, bro. You oh, Tim, Tim, no, I don't want to drop that. But you know, you know who I am, bro. You know what I'm saying? Five world championships. Two division world champ, baby. All right? Come on now. Check the resume. Bro, check it. I fought Manny Pacquiao, the guy that you trying to fight. For one, yes, you did duck Spence. We all know it, that's why you're getting all tight about it. And for two, do we know who you is? Yes, you're Tim Knothead Bradley, the man that ducked Earl Spence. And then you talking about your resume, five world champions, and you said two time two weight division champion, and you tell him to catch up? Okay, he's a three belt holding unified champion right now, about to be undisputed. Yeah, something that you would have never done. You've never been a three belt holder at one time. Yeah, Tim. So what are you saying? And I guarantee you, when it's all said and done, his resume will look a lot better than yours. What big names do you have on yours? I told you, your biggest win was a gift. That's why everybody was coming at you like that. That's why you felt so alone because everybody knew you didn't beat Pacquiao. You lost three straight, but they gave you one. Now, who are you again, Tim Bradley? You just a lonely ass man who sees a lion out there with a better record, a better resume, and he's gonna be a lot better than what he is. That man's done made more money than you have in your entire career already. But you talking about catch up. No, this is the big fish. Strap season, man down, and you see it. And that's why you're jealous, because you hate it. This man is on a damn plateau that he's done surpassed you. When he fought Kill Brook, he surpassed you. Matter of fact, no, I'll give you one better. When he unified with Sean Porter, he surpassed you. And his record is better than yours already, Tim. So, catch up for what? What do you want him to catch up to, Tim Bradley? And one thing about this about Earl, he ain't ducking nothing. He ain't ducking nothing. He want all the smoke. But then you sit there and fake like you want the smoke, but you really don't. And that's the real fact about the situation. Hey guys, stay down in front here. Everybody stay down. New world champion, Timothy Bryant. Everybody stay down. First and foremost, I thank God for allowing me to do this fight. Really, man? Really? What the hell is this, Tim? What the hell are we looking at? You mean to tell me on your biggest win, on the biggest stage, 
when it's time to make your press conference, they got to wheel your ass out there to make your press conference, but you want to fight. Man, that nigga beat the brakes off you. You couldn't even damn walk. That's why everybody was so mad. That's why everybody was talking all that about you, Tim. You obviously got the brakes beat off of you, and Bob Arum got you to win. You didn't beat Pacquiao. You're not skilled enough. And Pacquiao is a great fighter, but if you're a great boxer, you can beat him time and time again. His biggest weakness is a boxer. And Tim, look like he beat the hell out of you. You ain't never seen Earl coming out in a wheelchair. Earl is that dominant beast. And that's what makes you so hateful of him. Because you know he will walk you down. Walk through everything you do at him and break you. He will break you. And that makes you feel like less of a man because you know what this man can do to you. And that's why you hate on him. Because you know if he so chooses, he can break you like a twig and treat you like you're not even there. And it ain't nothing that you can do. You couldn't even keep him up off of you if you wanted to. That's the worst feeling for a man right there is when he know he can't do nothing about the next man that's right there in his face and can treat him any kind of way. Yes, that's why you're mad at Spence because he would own you, Tim Bradley, the same way Pacquiao owns you. Not once, not twice, but three times. But they gave you one. So you really owe it three versus Pacquiao, but they gave you one. So it's one and two versus Pacquiao. But let's put a star by that one because we really know who really won that fight. That's why the fans was coming at you that way. Come on, man. You was getting rolled out in a damn wheelchair. Now, I ain't never seen a champion come out in a wheelchair. But let me hear your narrative on that. Let me see how you spin that. This test. The only real man over at PBC is Deontay Wilder. You want to know why? Because he's going to be fighting Tyson Fury in February. Now, you guys over there, all the other welterweights over there, this man is begging begging to fight you and he's gonna continue to beg to fight you guys guys need to put your big bill big boy pants on and need to come over and make this fight with terrence bud crawford because he's the best welterweight in the world what about the what about the fact that there's a lot of welterweights and a champion on that side of the fence so that man i don't care about no side of the fence for me i don't care side of the fence this is the world of boxing Okay, Tim Bradley. Now watch you contradict yourself right here, buddy. To the street or the, the Bruh, I don't listen. It's there. It's there because when I was when I was coming up, that was the problem. I couldn't fight anybody from PBC. You know what I'm saying? We didn't do business with PBC. One and two, the WBC didn't order it, but the fight wasn't gonna be made because we didn't ever do business with them. You know what I'm saying? The fight wasn't gonna be made. So why would I even go down that alley when I got Manny Pacquiao right in front of me? I want I want the Earl Smith fight, but you. They not answering that phone. They don't want to do business. So what is it? So is he ducking them? What you say? Who? Who? Ducking them? Yeah. Yeah, he ducking them. Absolutely he ducking them. Yeah, y'all take that. He ducking Terrence Crawford. He don't want to fight Terrence Crawford. Tell me, I'm telling you that right now. You know what I'm saying? Because if he did, if he wanted to be considered the best pound for pound in the game, or one or two, he'll fight Terrence Crawford. But the fact that he's not fighting Terrence Crawford? Oh, what? I'm coming back, I'm gonna fight. You know, coming back from a car accident, all of this stuff, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna fight some, you know, a, a top guy out there. Please, man. Well, when it when it gets happen, when it does happen, then I believe it. Until then, I don't believe anything that come out of his mouth or what he says. Um, you know, it or not, it don't matter. I, I don't care. I don't care. I'm here to cover the whole sport, and I'm gonna tell it like I from my my position. I'm gonna tell it like it is. So you can say whatever you want to say. No, and then you see on, on what's his name on Twitter, you know, Terrence say, no, he's not ducking. He's not ducking me. No, he's not ducking me. You know what I'm saying? Terrence has to say that. You want to know why? Because he's a businessman. That's why he has to say that. You know what I'm saying? He can't talk trash about Spence. He can't say nothing about that. He a businessman. He don't know when this man going to say, yo, let's, let's fight. Let's fight, T. You know what I'm saying? So that's why he can't say that. But I can say it, and I said it. Timothy, if you were a betting man, who would you favor between that matchup? It's a great fight. It's a 50-50 fight. You know what I'm saying? Y'all already know. I'm a Terrence Crawford. I'm a Terrence Crawford guy. Now, isn't that the pot calling the kettle black? Now, you are a reputed and a documented ducker. Now, you trying to put Earl in the same category you are. No. It ain't going to happen. Earl don't duck nothing. He didn't even duck that Ferrari when he got in an accident and hit the concrete. Earl is 1-0 versus the Ferrari and concrete. Can you say that? 
And then you sit here talking about you don't believe nothing that man say. Everything that man has said has been the truth. That's why that's his name, the truth. He said when he get back out the car accident, he was going to fight a tough guy. He came back and he fought Danny Garcia coming right off the car accident. Then after the eye surgery, he said he was going to fight another top guy. Matter of fact, he unified three belts with your Danish Ugas. So you talking about you ain't going to believe what he said. Then he came back out and said he wants Terrence Crawford next. Now you sitting here being a fanboy for Terrence Crawford like that man's paying you. Like you need a license and a helmet to ride that nigga's jock, bruh. Because you out here looking like a damn female right now, Tim Bradley. And first off, Earl wants that smoke. You should tell your boy Bud to sign the contract. Because EJ trying to get in all that action right there. And I'm talking about all that action. And you see they're talking about from your perspective. Your perspective is from tainted glasses and a biased view. Because if you think that Earl Spence don't want all that action, then you got to be kidding me. You got to be wrong and you done hit your damn head somewhere because Big Fish Strap Season wants all the smoke. Why don't you go get you one of them commemorative shirts? It got all four champions up there, all four straps, because everything leads to undisputed. And yes, Bud ain't going to say that because he knew that Spence ain't ducking him. Matter of fact, he might be the one ducking because it's all the way in damn July and the fight still hasn't been signed yet. Hold, hey, Spence, I'm holding you uh, accountable to what you said. You said that uh, as soon as you captured all three world championships, you was gonna fight Crawford. Now that I'm holding you, I'm holding you to your word because that's what you said. So once you get this third belt with with Pacquiao, you win this belt, then I expect I expect you to fight Crawford. What's next? Oh, well, everybody know who I want next. I want Terrence Crawford next. Huh? You're gonna make that happen? Oh, definitely. That's the fight that I want. That's the fight everybody else wants. Like I said, I'm gonna get these straps and I'm gonna go over there and take his shit too. All right. Errol, congratulations. Terrific fight this evening. Thank you, man. Now, strap season. I know what time it is, baby. Terrence, I'm coming for that motherfucking belt. Now, Tim Bradley, I'm gonna hold you accountable. Get Bud to sign the contract. So when you get to it, don't let them see the spot. Next thing you know, you're looking for a rent sign up an echelon. Bitch, we skip line. Ten, the final hate. Al Heyman, Floyd Mayweather, Steven Espinosa. Unlike in the previous episodes, these people right here, Al Heyman, Floyd Mayweather, and Steve Espinosa, don't hate on Earl Spence, but they are the reason for his hate. The reason why he's objectified and villainized in this sport we call boxing. First of all, Al Heyman is one of the most hated men in the sports. Which is crazy when he does so much good for the boxing. He puts on so many great fights for us as fans. He made it where the boxers are finally getting paid instead of slave wages. Golden Boy and Top Rank took Al Heyman out for a lawsuit because... The Golden Boy fighters left Golden Boy and came over there to the PBC with Al Heyman where they're getting treated right. Al Heyman is a person for the people. He is a person for the fighters. He works for the fighters. He is a businessman and he's going to make sure his fighters get paid. And he makes sure Earl gets capitalized dollars, maximized fight, and great exposure. You can't really find a fighter that has something bad to say about Al Heyman unless they're not with Al Heyman. It's like when you're with the GOAT, hey. You get the benefits of being with the GOAT. And Oscar with De La Hoya, Golden Boy, they hate so bad. That's one of the reasons why Bernard Hopkins in a previous episode hates on Earl Spence because he's with Oscar De La Hoya and Golden Boy. But Earl's gonna stay with Al Heyman. He said him and Al Heyman for life, just like Floyd Mayweather. Him and Al Heyman for life. He made Floyd make a billion dollars, people. And I'm not talking about six zeros. I'm talking about nine with some change, yes. Al Heyman is probably the greatest sports mind out there when it comes to making money and putting fights together. And the fact that Earl, the true Spence, is with him, he garners the hate that they have for Al Heyman. They wish Al Heyman wasn't in this game so they can go back to paying fighters pennies on the dollar. But no, Spence is with Heyman and Spence is getting his money. And that is the main reason why they hate Spence. Because of Al Heyman. Al 
Al Heyman's going to do his job. And Al Heyman is going to do right by the fighters. That's why you don't see Al Heyman out in the public. Because he don't work for us. He works for the boxers. And he takes his job extremely seriously. And he's not out here like Eddie Hearns and all these other promoters trying to get the limelight. No. Al Heyman is back there trying to figure out how to make his boxers more dollars. More capitalization. More cheddar. And as long as Earl Spence is with Al Heyman, he's going to keep getting that hate that Al Heyman garners. And Earl don't care about it as long as his bank account keeps rolling. He's going to laugh all the way to the bank with two middle fingers up to all the haters. And if you work with Al Heyman, then you work with Floyd Mayweather, the arguably the face of boxing. Even though he's retired, he still garners a following. When Floyd walks in the room, all eyes is on the goats, the money team. Mr. Money Mayweather, Mr. Pretty Boy Floyd, Mr. TBE, yes, Floyd Mayweather. And with Earl's connections with Floyd, the way Floyd pushed Earl in the beginning, that garnered hate. They wanted to see Floyd lose. They wanted to see Floyd fail. They hate when you're the best. They hate when you're on top. And they see Earl's got the same trajectory that Floyd Money Mayweather had. And they don't want that to happen. They couldn't stand to see a young, prideful black man out there doing his thing. They don't want another Floyd Mayweather, so they're going to do any and everything that they can to stop Earl from reaching the pinnacle, the peak of boxing. They do not want to see that. And Floyd gave Earl a gentle shove. Matter of fact, he pushed them out the helicopter with the parachute. He even boxed Keith Thurman in to make Keith Thurman have to come and see the young lion who is Earl the True Spence. That's another reason why Keith Thurman is mad at Earl Spence because he knew that lion was on him and Floyd was trying to sick him on anybody that wanted to come after the goop. If you wanted to come after the goop, you had to go through his young lion first and he had Earl in tip top shape teaching him the tools in the trade, having Earl in the doghouse, learning new tricks while he sparring with the Wiley veteran. Yes, Floyd helped push Earl to a different spear. The same way Floyd was pushing Canelo, putting him on undercars. He didn't do Earl that way, but he still pushed Earl. And yes, that's another way that Earl garnered the hate because he was with Mr. Floyd, Money Mayweather. And when you're with Mayweather, it don't matter if you're Tank Davis, if you're Adrian Broner. Just being around the greatness of Floyd Mayweather will garner you the hate. And that is the hate that Earl is receiving now, since the beginning. Even the old fighters with the losses on their record, they know that Earl is an extension of Floyd Mayweather. And if they couldn't see Floyd take a L, they would rather see Earl take a L. Because they feel if Earl take a L, that's one strike against Floyd. But if you're waiting on Earl to take a daggone L, you better get you a box of Snickers, some camping gear. And a motherfucking time release watch because you're gonna be waiting for a long ass time. Hey, he might not lose, might retire undefeated again, and then you're gonna be really mad. Who you gonna hate on next? Frank the Ghost Martin? Because Earl is on a trajectory, so you can keep on hating. Your hating doesn't phase that man. As long as you're hating, you're giving him slime light. All attention is good attention. Whether you're paying attention to hate, or you're paying attention to congratulate. The fact is you paying attention and it is not free. You must pay to attend. And lastly, the fact that he has such a great relationship with Steve Espinosa. That's like a three-headed monster. You got the financial management of Al Heyman. You got the superstardom of Floyd Mayweather. Then you got the backing of Showtime, who is the best in sports. No, not ESPN, but Showtime. Showtime pay-per-view is where it's at. They make that money, they make that Skrilla, they set the precedence. They got the zone scrapping up the no pay-per-view policy trying to chase after them because Showtime is Showtime. They put it out there. It's time to get down because it's Showtime. And Steve Espinosa has been given a budget to play with his hobby that he has called boxing. And he is such a boxing enthusiast and he doesn't play when it comes to boxing Ask Pauly Molly Nachi because when he disrespected Wilder, E. Espinosa didn't take one bit of iota of what he was about to say. He told him, pack your shit and get the hell out of here, Pauly. So Steve ain't going for that. And Steve got that young animal named Earl the True Spence. And Steve know 
Earl is a commodity and Earl means big bucks and Steve likes to make big bucks so he's gonna ride with Earl the true Spence he's gonna make the fights that Earl makes because he knows Earl Spence is gonna garner that money Earl Spence has a whole state behind him the state of Texas is known as Earl the true Spence state it's the Lone Star Truth State. Man has a holiday for himself. April 16th, Earl the Truth Spence Day. You can't get it, it's bigger than that. And that all comes from having such a great promoter, having a great team, and having the starlight. This man has a holiday. He done transcended boxing and has a holiday. How can you hate on a man who had a near death fatal car accident that would have broke most people down? Most people at least wouldn't be walking, not alone boxing. Then come back from a retinal injury and still come back at the peak of the game and is performing better than he did before he was in the game. How can you hate on that? If you hating on that right there, then you just not a man, though. That's that beta energy. That's too many men out here been raised by females. So they don't know how to be a man. So they don't know how to get that alpha energy. So they're out here like females whining and hating. It takes too much energy for a man to hate on another man. When you see Spence greatness, why don't you congratulate it? Or why don't you look at that and say, hey, you can do that as well instead of hating on that man. That man has come from the bottom. He has put in his tools. That man has paid his dues. So don't hate this man. Congratulate and uplift this man and salute to what he's going through and what he's trying to accomplish and all the great fights that he's given us. That's what you need to do instead of hating on this man. Because even if you hating, all you're doing is wasting your energy because what you say or do does not bother that man. Because whether you like him or not, he's still gonna make his money, make his fights and do whatever the hell he wanna do. So all you're doing is wasting the energy and you need to jump on the daggone bandwagon because you're getting to watch greatness. He's a once in a lifetime fighter. And you're going to sit here and miss out on it because you rather hate on the man. And that's what happened with Floyd Mayweather. A lot of people sat there and hate on Floyd and they missed out on incredible boxing. So don't miss out on incredible boxing. Don't hate on Earl True Spence. Acknowledge him for his greatness. And watch what he brings to the table and you will become a fan of Earl the True Spence too. I'm out of here.